I'm John Batchelor. Gordon Chang of Forbes.com is here. Gordon, the Dalai Lama, did I see him at the White House just within these last days, sitting there with the President of the United States, sitting there and at the same time hearing the squawking from Beijing. That all happened within these last days. It, it certainly did, John. His Holiness was at the White House. The Chinese complained bitterly, and Obama just blew them off. And indeed, he appointed a special official for Tibet, which really must have irked the Chinese. I recall a photograph five years ago, just February. I was well, There was snow on the ground with the Dalai Lama uh, going into the White House and sneaking out the back entrance. That was the joke at the time. And the White House being very apologetic, uh, almost to the point of regretful that the president had visited or the Dalai Lama had been anywhere near the White House. Five years later, same Dalai Lama, same president, same China. However, this time it looked it looked more certain, Gordon. Did I, do I, did I see it correctly? You certainly saw it correctly, John. And what's changed is the perception of China in Washington. Lapsang Nyandak, executive director of the Tibet Fund, joins us. We've spoken with Lapsang happily for many years, watching the troubled relationship between Washington and Tibet. There's no troubled relationship between Washington and China. That's a total mystery of obeisance by Washington and domination by China. China treats Tibet as a conquered country. Indeed, it is. Lapsang, a very good evening to you. I'm certain that the D Dalai Lama was pleased to be with the President of the United States. He's pleased to be anywhere. I know the Dalai Lama. He's quite cheerful. What has happened that the White House stopped listening to the squawking from Beijing? Good evening to you. Uh, good evening, John Bessley. In fact, uh, you know, I remember the last two times that His Holiness met with President Obama, I was also part of the entourage. And, uh, you know, what I have uh, seen is the consistent policy of the U.S. government, particularly, the, you know, uh, President Obama. He has been, uh, you know, meeting with His Holiness for the last now three times in his uh, five uh, years uh, in the office. And in all this occasion, I would say that, uh, you know, he has accorded uh, very high respect to His Holiness. Uh, you, know, the, you know, he very keenly listened to the views expressed by His Holiness. And he also very strongly, uh, you know, stated that his, he supports the middle way approach, uh, you know, proposed by His Holiness the Alama, that is to... Uh, uh, have a genuine uh, autonomy for the entire Tibetan uh, area. So, in fact, uh, uh, you know, what we believe is that even though the U.S. government has been very consistent in supporting the Tibet issue, but the Chinese government has always reacted negatively, you know, with all this uh, Overture. So we are hoping that uh, uh, you know, even though the China, Chinese government has been very angry with this uh, uh, meeting, but at the same time, such a high-profile meeting, you know, gives immense kind of encouragement to the you know, people who are people inside Tibet who are suffering tremendously under the Chinese regime. Lo Song, do you think that this meeting with uh, President Obama and His Holiness, do you think that this will encourage leaders in other countries to also meet with His Holiness, or will this have no effect outside the U.S.? No, I, I you know, strongly believe that these kind of high-profile meetings will definitely, you know, encourage other leaders around the world, including, you know, Canada or, you know, European countries, because they, most of them, uh, you know, look forward to what position and policy the U.S. government is taking vis-a-vis -vis His Holiness and the Tibet uh, issue. So, therefore, you know, U.S. government trying to be a little assertive in terms of, you know, uh, you know, showing their support to, on, on Tibet, uh, I think other governments will definitely follow suit. The U.S. is calling for a dialogue, Gordon. Do I read this correctly, that the Obama administration has made a decision to be more overt in its support of Tibet, knowing that China will be irritated? They've decided to do this despite the diplomatic reservations? Oh, I'm sure, because they know Beijing's reaction to all of this. Right. They've talked to the Chinese leaders about Tibet so many times, they know exactly how Beijing would react, and so therefore it does signal a change in posture in the White House. There's a new U.S. ambassador, Max Baucus, who has says that he doesn't know anything about China. Uh, is this a change of weather that the White House is sending out someone who doesn't spend his time telling people what an expert he is in China? It's a representative of the United States of America, not a, not a handholder for, uh, for China. 
Well, I, I think that Senator Baucus was a choice that had a lot of reasons to it, and part of it, only some of them dealt with uh, or related to uh, relations with Beijing. But I think what it does show is that, uh, you know, they've sent over a tough guy, and, and Beijing is not going to like that, especially after the last couple ambassadors that they've seen. Lab Sung, I understand. You're diplomatic, the Dalai Lama's diplomatic, but uh, do the Tibetans watching this realize that this is a considerable change for the Obama administration? This is a step forward in being blunt. Do the, the Tibetans hear this, Lapsang? Certainly, yes. You know, Tibetan people have been, you know, watching very closely in terms of you know, President Obama's support, his administration's support to the Tibetan people. So, uh, you know, this visit, uh, which went extremely well for over uh, almost an hour, and also not only, you know, uh, uh, you know, meeting, in, in fact, meeting was pretty low profile, but at the same time, when the statement came out, it was pretty strong in terms of... Support. Very strong, very yes, strong. The, the so Tibetans are certainly very happy and encouraged by this, uh, you know, meeting. Encouraged. Gordon, they have, there's plenty of reason to think that there's trouble ahead. I, of course, welcome the trouble, so do you. But all of a sudden, Gordon... Does this relate to the East China Sea? I mean, all the rest of the aggression? Well, I think that essentially there's been this change we talked about, and it's because of not only those issues, but many others where Beijing has shown that it's not a partner, and so therefore His Holiness and the Tibetans have benefited from this. Let's, let's speak bluntly here. The President of the United States and the Obama administration did the right thing in meeting with the Dalai Lama, in speaking bluntly to China, and in showing their support for the people of Tibet. I'm John Batchelor. Lapsang Nyandak, who is uh, uh, helping us very carefully watch through the diplomatic uh, niceties here, executive director of the Tibet Fund and Gordon Chang of Forbes.com.